This is the Brian Brown Raptor. It's a knife on loan to me from Brian Brown. Uh, really cool and humble uh, knife designer and maker. I just had a great conversation with him on the podcast this week. And uh, what, a, what a cool dude. And an inspirational story of going from retail sales to knife, knife making and designing phenom. So cool story. Check out the podcast. He was kind enough to send this along to me uh, to check out. Uh, this Raptor sold out like immediately upon its drop uh, earlier in, I believe earlier in 2022 or maybe at the end of 2021. And uh, this uh, was one of the iterations it came out in. Um, I think it came out in four different, four or five different variations, including some with speed holes, including some with uh, dark hardware or dark blades and dark handles, and also this beautiful Damasteel and Mokutai combination. Not much of a Mokutai guy, and I don't, I have like hardly any Damascus in my collection, but I think I need to change that because just having this for two weeks on loan has opened my eyes to some of these more beautiful materials. Though I was, I, I have carried this a couple of times, it makes me very nervous to have this gorgeous material on the clip because I tend to rub up against countertops and such and um but look at that it's just beautiful the colors are just uh really nice and I love the patterns within you see purple and blue and silver mm -mm -mm. there's Brian's logo right there in the cutout that's a cool uh way to to brand it right there in the in the necessary evil that is the cutout Though you can always have that on the inside and you can also, I like the way he avoided the clip, pop it, the pocket clip there with the cutout. <clears throat> uh, sometimes when that cutout is under the pocket clip, you'll get your pants material bunching up there and it makes it difficult to remove the knife from your pocket. You can see down in here, uh, weight reduction, uh, milled out pockets there, pretty thorough. And then you look on the on the lock bar side, same thing, pretty thorough. You've got a lock bar insert there and nice, nice thumb stud action. It's super smooth. It has kind of the feel, kind of an um, a Sabenza feel. And I really, really dig this. Um, the blade shape is perfect for um, this sort of saber grip. In, in concert with this very neutral yet sculpted handle here and contoured. Uh, so it, when you're holding this in saber grip, it is perfect. Uh, when you choke up in a sort of Filipino grip with the thumb in this swale there, it feels great. The handle is, you know what's interesting is that the handle on this is pretty small. Here, let me show you by comparison uh, with a PM2, which has the same sh um, size blade here, we'll put it right on that line. So same size blade, but the handle here is much more slender and, you know, a good, uh, I don't know, uh, at least half inch longer or, or shorter. And yet it still feels very comfortable. You can still choke up. You have that little room there to choke up if you need to. So you get a lot of utility out of this much smaller space. These are, of course, very different knives, and, uh, you know, I might be more apt to use this for ch heavy chores and such, but my point is you can make the, um, you can make the whole package smaller and still keep it, and still have uh, long, uh, quite a bit of cutting edge and blade, and still have it fit in a smaller package, and still be able to choke up. So I, I really think this is a, a great design. At first, I thought... And I even told Brian this in, in our conversation. I was like, when this first came out, I was so wowed by how it looked. But then when I heard the specs, I was like, oh, the blade is just slightly under five inches. Whew, that ex that absolves me from having to buy this. So I, I looked no further. Sometimes I do that. I do that quite a bit, actually. I'll see a knife that I'm really enthusiastic about in terms of design and looks. And I would really like to have it. And then I justify not buying it by, by uh, particulars in the specs. And then oftentimes, uh, as time goes by, I will double back and, in this case, get a chance to hold this thing and then realize, oh, uh, I think I want it. <laughs>
So really, really nice knife. Um, it's got that double peaked Mac V Sog Bowie shape that I love so much. Um, this this blade shape design was born out of some uh, special forces activities in um, what is it? Vietnam, Indochina, before the Vietnam War, uh, the Mac V Sog Bowie was born. I love this double peaked look and I always have. It's just compelling to me for some reason. And so to see it here. Mm, mm, mm. And then I realized I don't have enough really fine Bowie knives in my collection. And by Bowie, I just mean clip, clip point folders. So I'm sure, I hope he's doing another drop of these. To be honest, I don't remember if I asked him about that. Uh, I don't think I did, but I think uh, this was such a success. I think I think he will probably do another uh, run of these. So smooth. I really like the action here. Um, I am not always a fall shutty kind of guy. I like the feel of smoothly returning the blade into the handle with my finger or thumb. Dry as they are. Uh, very nice cutter. This one is extremely sharp. I'm, I was trying to figure out if this was a factory edge and looking at it through the viewfinder, I think it is. It is incredibly sharp. And of course, Riot, we know them uh, for their excellent high quality. So a great OEM for him to go with for making these, uh, these awesome knives. All right, let me show it with a couple of others. Oh, I forgot to mention this blade shape, especially the blade shape, is based on and uh, by his earlier knife, the Warthog, based on the A10 Warthog, or named after the A10 Warthog. This is named after the F-22 Raptor, our air supremacy, our air superiority fighter. If you don't know what that looks like, look it up. It's super cool. Uh, his other knife, uh, the A10 Warthog, or the Warthog that I just mentioned, is a double-peaked Bowie, differently shaped, uh, slightly. Uh, this peak is a little bit further up, and there's a big... Um, opening hole there, uh, void for opening and flicking, and it won best tactical knife, best tactical folder at Blade Show 2021. And like a fool, I didn't see that when I was there. I did see his table, but it was thronged with people and I didn't end up uh, making it back. But uh, the Warthog is a really cool knife also. So let me show this with a couple of um, knives. Uh, just for size comparison, here it is with a uh, RSK mini RSK Mark One, so that's like a three-inch blade basically. And here it is with that PM2, so about the same size as this in terms of blade, but way more discreet in terms of handle. There's, um, all right. Here it is with my Riot knives. I don't have too many of them, but there it is with the Antimatter by Arcane Designs. And then the beautiful uh, K2 by Riot also. This is obviously, this is under the Riot shingle. These two are OEM productions. Oof, I might have to add this to that, that family. I mean, look at this. Uh, it, it stands to reason, right? Uh, I have a dagger made by Riot. I have a Tonto made by Riot. So now I need a clip point made by Riot. Uh, okay, so let's see a couple of other uh, classics I want to show this with uh, before I close it and open it sumptuously for show. Uh, here it is with the Chris Reeve knives. It's a Benza 21, a classic that I have grown to love. This was like an arranged marriage. Like when I bought it, I bought it because I felt like I should and I had the money. And I felt like every knife junkie needs a Chris Reeve knives to Benza. I got it and then it took a few years for me to fall in love with it, just like the way marriages used to be. Uh, and then here, let's see, uh, here it is with the XM18 reground. Beautiful, beautiful knife. And then lastly, with the Les George VSEP. So some, some classy production knives here to go with this classy production knife. I'm really... Well, very grateful that he loaned this to me. Oh, uh, before I before I dip, let me show this with uh, the other knives he loaned to me. So here it is with the Wee Knives um, prototype of his very famous Jaeger M. 
You can see it's a hollow ground blade. Who doesn't love a hollow ground blade? Look at that. Beautiful. And this sort of, uh, um, what is that? Uh, sort of blasted titanium. Very cool knife. But this was when he was shopping around, figuring out who's going to produce his Jaeger M. This is what uh, we sent him as the prototype. And then this is what he ended up going with. Again, Riyadh. This one is a special version. Uh with Jaeger M with Fanatic Edge cross hatch milling and Mokutai. So look at that. Fanatic Edge did that cool knurling. I love the feel of knurling. And then you got the Mokutai there and that beautiful clip. And then on these, uh, both of these uh, knives, you get that really cool domed or crowned backspacer that goes the, the full length. In this case, it's bronzed, very subtle bronzing there. But what a beautiful knife. I'm gonna do a video on these also. And this is also hollow ground, but look at how Riyadh hollow ground it. Yikes, looks like a straight razor. Let's compare it, compare it to the Wii. So quite a bit of difference there, but uh, both, here, let's line them up, that's fair, okay. Quite a bit of difference in the hollow grind here. Both beautiful, but of course, this is the one he went with. And man, I think it's that hollow ground that really that really sold him. Beautiful knives. Brian Brown, check him out. And check out the, uh, the podcast. I'll link it below. Uh, conversation with him. Great guy. And such a cool knife. Uh, don't be surprised if you see one of these in the collection sometime soon. All right, take care.